First, we will finish image based questions. The appearance of this renal angiogram, what is this characteristic appearance called? String of beads appearance. That is very characteristic of fibromuscular dysplasia, is what you have to basically remember. Now, what is this appearance when you go to a multiplex theatre watching the movie? What do you order for? Popcorn. So, this is a typical popcorn space occupying lesion. So, that is classical of cavernous angioma, which can undergo the bleeding, is what you need to remember. Then, here, here having what is called empty delta sign. This is called this. Is it not looking like the delta? So, where do you find it? Whenever there is any superior sagittal thrombosis, we get what is called empty delta sign. If you do a contrast to CT, the thrombosed dural sinus will be enhancing, whereas thrombus will not be enhancing and that typically gives that empty delta sign is what you need to remember. Then you have been shown the CT brain. What do you see? You are seeing blood in the sylvian fissure. Blood in the sylvian fissure is the sign of subarachnoid hemorrhage. What are the three types of hemorrhage? Intracerebral, subdural, extradural, subarachnoid. Four types of hemorrhage. Can you give me the board please? Typically, see, you are having the brain. Around the brain, you are having one layer, Paya, then Arachinoid, then Dura. And outside that, you are having Calvarium. Calvarium, Dura, Arachinoid, Paya. Whenever bleed occur between pia and arachinoid, that becomes subarachinoid hemorrhage. And pia is closely abutting the cerebral hemisphere. So, all this bleed will accumulate in the fissures, the gyri and sulci. Because this is closely abutting, any bleed immediately overlying this will be this will be like this no doctor actually I drawn like this but it will be like this so all the bleed will collect in sulky and gyri as what you can see that is the nature of subarachinoid hemorrhage then between arachinoid and dura you have subdural space whenever bleed occur into subdural space typically it will be a completely vertical crescentic shaped patch of bleed is what you will get and above the dura but below the calvarium whenever bleed occur it will be typically a biconvex shaped bleed which is arterial which is then called epidural bleed is what you need to remember and fourth kind is you can have a bleed into basal ganglia and internal capsule which is intracerebral bleed. So, that is the story which you need to be quite sure about. Okay? Now, now, so to diagnose this, what we need to do is we should not give contrast. Non contrast CT is the investigation of choice. Many times this question was asked in the entrance exam. Now, what is the investigation of choice for the diagnosis? in a 64 year old presenting with deafness if there is a cerebellar pontine tumor which is generally acoustic neuroma to diagnose acoustic neuroma gadolinium enhanced MRI is considered to be the best investigation now what is that appearance you are seeing of the skull it is called hyperostosis of skull increased opacity of the calvarial bone, hyperostosis of the skull.
typically it can be a normal variant it can be chronic phenytoin therapy it can be microcephalic brain anything can be hyperostosis diffusely but fibrous dysplasia causes hyperostosis focally so accordingly the causes of hyperostosis are divided into diffuse hyperostosis versus focal hyperostosis which you need to basically remember 36 year old women with long standing severe iron deficiency anemia serum ferritin is low and slowly progressive dysphagia and uh, you are finding coilonychia esophageal web and uh, you can also see the esophageal web on barium classical of plumber vinson syndrome it is common in the middle aged women you need to do mechanical dilatation there is a risk of squamous cell carcinoma of both pharynx and esophagus it is not adenocarcinoma but it is squamous cell carcinoma even of esophagus and also of pharynx anything can happen is what you have to basically remember now doctor 54 year old you have done FNAC what is the false about this lesion 54 year old with a thyroid mass you have done FNAC these are called Hartle cells and what is that carcinoma called Hartle cell carcinoma that will be poorly taking up the radioactive iodine and uh, it is very aggressive tumor unless you treat aggressively patient is going to succumb and if you diagnose it with FNAC you can even diagnose only with FNAC no need of biopsy based on FNAC only you can do lobectomy and isthmectomy and if the size of the tumor is more than 5 there is an indication for total thyroidectomy is what you have to basically remember now doctor you have been shown different shapes of pelvis gynecoid, android, anthropoid and uh, platypeloid if we directly ask you, Maza nahi hai. you must recognize which, which shape can be called gynecoid, which is called android, anthropoid, and platypeloid. So, first is gynecoid, then if this is android, this is anthropoid, finally platypeloid. Gynecoid is most common type of pelvis. Android, it favors oblique oblique occipital posterior position when the fetal skull comes out the occipit is posterior actually it should turn anterior and the face must go posterior face must should see the ground then you can pull out the baby but the dotation if it doesn't occur and the occiput remains posterior towards the sacrum of the mother and the baby's face is looking to sky if you don't properly manage, baby will go into sky. So it should turn. So oblique po occipital posterior is being favored by the android type of a pelvis is what you need to remember. And uh, it is the platypeloid which favors transverse position. And anthropoid is the one which favors direct occipital posterior position not platypeloid is what we have to basically remember now what type of placenta are you seeing in this case what type of placenta based on the insertion of the umbilical cord towards the margin what type of placenta do you like to call it as